An incredible feeling to know that you have won a Grammy and that uh, then months later the Grammy comes in the mail. That's yet another cool thing because um, it takes a while for them to engrave it and all that. And it came in this really cool box, a very large box, and the foam that it was in was form fitted. So the foam, if you take out half of it, it's the relief sculpture of a Grammy exactly. It's like they melted the Grammy and put, or they heated it up and put it in there. So I'm saving the foam and the box and everything too. Well, I was in that zone for many years where I was so into it that I played almost an entire show with my eyes closed. And uh, back in the day when I was playing in Washington, D.C., I remember the manager of our group used to say, Greg, just open your eyes once. Look at the audience once. And I go, I'm just so into it. I, you know, I'm like in the zone. Girl in the Red Dress, that's a, that's a title that actually came from the cover of the CD. Because we, I put out the word to a few artists that I'm looking for a cover. And this artist came back with this really cool looking cover that had the girl in the red dress. And so it just worked out. I had a cool song that was looking for a title. So I put them together and it works out great. It kind of sounds like it and it matches the visual. And so there you go. I'm kind of notorious for not having titles for a long time and I'll have code titles. It'll be like either the date that I wrote it or it'll just be the chord progression, you know, and I, I love asking the audience and the audience really seems to get into that too. Uh, if I pick your title to match the song when the CD's coming out, you win. <laughs> oh, what do you win? Uh, well, you get a free CD, of course, and your name on the credits of the CD, huh? How's that? Good deal? I mentioned it before we play the song, so like they're like, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to win. I'm going to come up with the title. We're so lucky to do what we do and to be able to do all original music. I don't do covers. To be able to do my music and have people come and buy tickets, you know, that's the ultimate accomplishment. I've always considered myself a composer first. That was always my goal, to be a, a composer. And, you know, thankfully, it's, it's sort of happened that I've got a lot of songs for other people, you know, on other people's records, some hit songs. and. So that combined with what I do on my records, I'm very happy with that.
my dad's a musician, and my mom sang. They performed together. They w travel around in clubs and cabarets and at Las Vegas and showrooms. Um, all my brothers and sisters took piano lessons, you know, and got into music. I went to a private Catholic school. They didn't have a lot of money for instruments, so they didn't have a lot of band instruments. So he said, well, you know what? If you can borrow some an instrument from somebody, you know, anybody in your family, you can play it. <laughs> so my uncle had a saxophone. So I, I called him, I said, can I borrow your sax? And, and of course he was great. And he said, yeah, sure. And little did I know, it was a Selmer Mark VI, which is a very, you know, expensive saxophone. And it was, he was gracious enough to lend it to me as a kid to use his saxophone, which, you know, is enough to do. But I, what I did, he, he, he let me use it and I started playing and I fell in love with it. And um, I ended up practicing every single day. And because of that, by the time my sophomore year in high school, I went back to band class. I, I became first chair in everything the concert band and within a few months. So practice makes perfect and it pays off. I enjoy myself, I genuinely have fun. You know, and when you're having fun doing something, it, it's easy. And that's, that's what it comes down to. I, you know, I, when I see the people dancing and smiling, and I just feed off of that. <laughs>